to Weekend Warriors. Uh, very good to be back with the Weekend Warriors. <laughs> when, when did you first pick up the guitar? Uh, I started playing guitar primary school, grade four, grade five. Um, just, uh, you know, the typical boom, chink, chink, boom, chink, chink uh, guitar lessons. Um, was interested in it and uh, played ever since. Yeah. And what did you l- listen to growing up in your teens? Uh, uh, eclectic. A compilation. I think my first record I ever bought was Cat Stevens. Um, my older brother was into heavier music, um, Credence, uh, Jimi Hendrix, uh, all that era. Um, a bit of the Beatles, a bit of the Stones. You know, all all those classics that you know now. But I was I was probably a big fan of Ry Cooter too. The way he played his guitar very differently from a lot of other guitarists I've seen. So yeah, a whole range of influences on on music back then. Yeah. yeah I- of course, you were busy playing footy in your younger days. Did you ever play with guys in a band in a garage? I, I like actually, in fact, one of my great uh, one of my great um, well, my great uh, musical uh, claim to fame is that I'm uh, direct cousins of Shane Howard and the Gwena Band, and we actually Justin and I actually performed on their Spirit of Place album, singing background vocals in one of their songs in Factory Man. We went in to watch them record. And uh, Shane actually t- said that uh, the producer said we need a male chorus in the background and Shane pointed at me and Justin. We were just there to watch him record and he said, these two can sing. So we actually um, joined him with the band and did a male chorus on Factory Man. And in, not in that, not, of course, not in the compact of the digital one, but when the vinyl came out, uh, uh, Shane had got an insert with, every, he thanked everybody, which he's fantastic for, but he actually, I always remember he said, I would like to thank Simon and Justin Madden, people we could look up to, boom, boom. And for singing in uh, uh, Factory Man on, uh, in, in the in the in the Ness, Nestle's Gentlemen's Canteen Chorus in Factory Man, so there's my musical claim as well. But and that, we actually did at one stage. We actually Justin and I actually played. Oh no, no, sorry, Paul and I, my older brother, we actually played with Shane on Hey Hat Saturday. One just so you know, it was just sort of he liked bringing people together. So yeah. so there's my big musical claim to fame. <laughs> So what's the bigger buzz, playing footy in front of a big crowd or uh, playing a good gig on stage? Oh, uh, yeah, true. It's, well, the, 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 uh, the good gig is, is, is more present in your mind, so it's, um, uh, it's great doing that. I, I'm not sure if you can match the, until I get a big crowd at Wembley Stadium or something like that, hundred thousand. I don't know if you can, you can match the adrenaline rush. I mean, you can, you can match the, oops, I made a mistake in front of lots of people, but uh, I think the adrenaline rush out of footy is great, but the actual just playing the music and, and getting up and singing and carrying on is, is really good. When you were playing footy, did you or your teammates ever use music as motivation? Oh, regularly. Music was always used Music was always used as motivation, whether you're playing um, Eye of the Tiger before a game. I know you see a lot of players, uh, players before games with headphones on. Um, again, you know, horses for courses. Some people are very quiet in their lead up. Others are a bit more uh, energetic. And a lot of times there's people who've got the music in their ears to to get the right motivation, the right arousal level, as they say. So when did you first hear about Weekend Warriors? Uh, it was actually, I, was, I think I remember reading, vaguely reading about it years ago, but it was uh, mainly through um, uh, uh, Wendy Stapleton and Paul Norton. Uh, my wife, Mary, uh, and we've known them for ages, and, and Wendy talked my wife, Mary, into being involved in a, a choral group she's got together. And, and we went along and typical like um, the Weekend Warriors, you got all the girls together, got up on stage, uh, an afternoon, five, six uh, groups sang and, and we went along, it was great. And then Wendy said to me, well, if Mary's doing the, uh, Mary's doing the, the, you know, the choir, you have, to, you have to jump in with Paul and do the band. And a couple of friends, um, good friends, Ken and John, we've, you know, once every six, eight weeks, we'd have a Tuesday night, few beers and just jam. And... Um, and I said to Paul, yeah, yeah, we'll do it, but these, you know, me and these two guys have got to stick together because that's what we've been doing. Yeah. And you did the jam and, and uh, yeah, you know, we got together, you got a, a, a drummer and a um, bass player and we fiddle around a little bit and then, of course, you make the decision to jump in and we did and um, we did we did our first gig. And, and Paul was great because, what you know, what I've, I've said to our band too is that he was the producer, so he said, you're playing this, you're doing this, you're doing this, you're doing, and it so really brought it together. And we actually actually put a fair bit of rehearsal in for the first gig. And I think on the, on the uh, when we did our first gig, it was actually, we were probably the, uh, the most uh, rehearsed. I wouldn't say necessarily the best, but we were the most rehearsed. So we were probably the tightest out of that gig. And it was really funny because you, what do you do? So we, you know, there's five of us then, there's now seven because the two wives had joined in with the singing. So there's seven of the men, but back then five of us, we all wore very colored, you know, very bright colored t-shirts. 
uh, we called ourselves the Wrinkles for the day. And, uh, and I announced that, you know, like our counterparts, we did age-appropriate music. So we did, you know, 67, 60s, 70s, 80s, few 90s cover, cover songs. And uh, we've been doing that for five years. Yeah. What do you remember about the experience of, of playing that gig? Oh, look, I, I, you know, that, I think that was the thing because I, I've, I've had the chance to play with other people. But to actually sort of, it's, and it's like any team, I suppose, you, you come together and you have a common cause. And so you work really hard. Uh, to do it and and it comes out and works and um, I always remember it went so like half an hour seven so, six or seven songs and so hard to work on and it just was over like that and I remember we finished and we sort of looked at each other and you know you could see in your eyes did you enjoy that and you know somebody said do you want to do it again and we said oh yeah why not and Johnny our guitarist said well my brother's managing a pub we'll get us a gig so we had to turn we had to turn seven songs into enough to do a gig. I uh, did a lot of practice, and we regularly practice, which is what you have to do when we can get together. Uh, and I think we've got about 120 songs in a repertoire now, of which, you know, some are better than others. But and there's more, you know, when you're doing classic uh, rock, and you're doing all the covers, there's ones that people just want. And I think you know if you if you don't know the song and you can't move your feet, we don't play it. You know, that's basically what you do for the and and we've you know we we did we've done. Uh, uh, we did a gig at Crown for a, a, a group uh, a couple of weeks ago, so we've come, you know, we've come along a little uh, away. We've done Mooney Valley, we've done private functions. Um, of course, we still do the standard pub gigs, one at the Asker Vale and uh, the Asker Vale Hotel and the Asker Vale, of course, and, and Victoria Hearts Hotel in Footscray. We're starting to do a regular gig there, and which is good. I really enjoy it. Um, trying to fit it into your real life because you know if you want to make money, don't be a muso. You know? <laughs> it's more a hobby. So trying to fit that in all the other, into all the other things you do is sometimes. Um, a bit, uh, you know, a bit cumbersome, but uh, no, look, we enjoy it. It's great. It's great fun. Well, what do you call yourselves? Uh, we're better late than never. Okay. Boom, boom, because we all, <laughs> we're all, uh, we're all at the, uh, yeah, we're all at the other, other, not when the youthful groups are starting, we're sort of all at the other end and we did start late. So, uh, and we normally, most time, most gigs, we, we are probably late, so it's, but it's better late than never, you know? Um, going through the week and more experience, the, the jam, the rehearsals, the gig, What's the number one thing you you think you got out of the experience? Oh, look, I, I think it was I think it was coming together. I think the, you know for anybody who's doing it, um, you know, I mean, I, I was you know I've made a fool of myself in front of a hundred thousand people, so you know I'm not worried about making a fool of myself in front of myself. But I think there's a whole lot of people who um, who play guitar, sit at home, and would like to do it. And this is actually uh, you know conceptually it's great because you get a chance to. You know, with the jam, you get a chance to try it, and, and and you know, and people mess up, and it doesn't matter. You you get a feel for what you want to do, and then um, you come together for the gig. And and you know, we've talked about this with other people. For us, it was just a chance to be musos, and then we thought about, well, look, we want to continue. Some people do it and say, look, I've done it. Thanks very much. I really enjoyed. But that chance, you know, if you've ever if you've ever wanted to have that muso experience. Um, I reckon it's great. I reckon it's fantastic. I reckon I'd say to anybody who wants to have a go, at least do the jam because there's no, you know, there's no commitment. Then you do, bring your guitar or your voice or your drums or your drum, you know, your sticks or whatever because there's a lot of, you know, uh, instruments provided for it. And um, you just get involved, you know, and, and have that jam and, and see. And look, there's a lot of stuff, you know, one of the hardest things for a lot of people is getting up in front of people. You know, they say at a funeral that most people... You know, the two biggest fears is one public speaking and then two death and in that order. So most people at a funeral would rather be in the coffin than do the eulogy. <laughs> There's a little bit of that about weekend once. Oh, I'm going to get up in front of people and what if I make a mistake? And there's varying levels of, of you know, competency in it. But, and I know people just, I know some people just want to get up and they want to do that song in front of a crowd. So, you know, they, everybody else wants a song. So they come together, there's six songs, but this is the song they've always wanted to do. And they do it. And we know a few other people have continued with their, um, uh, with their, uh, with their bands afterwards. I know I know of a bloke who who was good friends of ours who never played a musical instrument and just came along and has been involved in us and a few other uh, bands in Week and Morris. He's actually learnt the bass along the way and is now in, in a band and they've done their first gig as they're just about to do their first gig as a band. So it brings people together. It's real enjoyment. Um, if you've got you know a little bit of music in your in your in your body and your bones, you can actually tap a beat or get a couple of notes out. Um, yeah, it's good fun. Yeah. So That's a long answer to a short question, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I always do that. So, have you got gas now? The, the gear acquisition syndrome? Oh uh, no! Look, I've, I've been oh, I've, very good point. I'm, 
The, yeah, the, the trumpets have got a very expensive taste. The guitars I want are about twenty five grand a pop. So I've got, like, I've got, um, what have I got now? I only got three, only three, four. Well, probably three, but I'm I'm, spe- I'm specifically chasing a certain type of guitar, uh, which is is not a collectible. It's just an older one, and I've seen a couple. Of, it's like a it's a nineteen fifty sort of nineteen fifty seven acoustic K guitar cutaway sunburst. Um, it won't be more than a thousand bucks, but trying to get one is it's more just finding one rather than it's a collectible but um oh i've got a long list of guitars i want <laughs> uh, and i think when i when i retire when, if that ever happens and i've got more time uh, and you dig into your super maybe i might go and get a uh, a few of them but uh, it's very easy to do you know and you try guitar and then you and i know i know our lead guitarist is he's probably bought and sold more guitars than i've ever owned um and he's still getting more but it can happen. <laughs> okay, for someone who's a bit shy or reluctant, um, half thinking about weekend warriors. Oh, look, look, do it. And I think that if even if you're a little bit shy about it, if you really want to have a, and I think the thing is that just I've always enjoyed playing music with other people, and I know with our our bass player now, he was very shy, and he he sort of got up on stage and stood there in the back. Now he's a bit you know a bit more forward and coming forward. Um, you don't have to be, it's not about you being the main person, it's about you working in the group. So if you're the bass player or, or the, you want to be a backing singer or you're a guitarist, you don't have to be the lead guitarist, you don't have to be the lead singer, you just get together and be involved with other people. And there's something um, very rewarding about getting together with people and making music that other, you and other people enjoy. Uh, I'd, look, I'd encourage people to take the first step and go and do the jam. And then from there you can work out, you might get the bug, and uh, I know a few people have done it and they're still playing. Yeah. So, Thanks for your time. Thank you.